Welcome back, folks. This is quarter of four, House Institutions Committee. We're finishing up our day and scheduling. It is Wednesday, February 16th. Um, we are going to be taking up the investment dollars for Justice Reinvestment 2. It's allocating our out of state beds. We have a total of about 700 and 77. Seven, that's what I thought. 777,000. Um, it's out of state bed savings over two fiscal years. And uh, Appropriations Committee has been asking us a little bit to weigh in on this. Uh, we have looked at four areas. We have not made any decisions, but we have taken testimony and looked at domestic violence intervention programming, transitional housing, mental health support services, and the offender management system for data collection. We've had some conversations with the individual folks within those sectors, as well as with the Department of Corrections. And last week, uh, the department indicated that they themselves would be looking at uh, these dollars and where maybe they should be invested and they have a proposal that they've been working on, and this is what they're going to present to us this afternoon. So there is a document on our webpage, many webpage um, for folks at home or are YouTubing in, uh, streaming in, you can access that on our committee webpage. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Commissioner Demo, Demo um, and we also have Matt Diagostino here, Deputy Commissioner. So welcome, welcome back, Commissioner. Thank you. Nice to be back for the afternoon part two. Uh, always a pleasure to be here. Again, it's Nick Demmel for the Vermont Department of Corrections. Um, and, and I have our uh, interim deputy commissioner and financial expert, uh, Matt D'Agostino, with me. Um, so really appreciate the opportunity to come back and discuss uh, some proposals with you on justice reinvestment. Um, as you mentioned at the beginning, the committee has been considering kind of four large buckets of justice reinvestment options. Um, those are transitional housing, domestic violence intervention, uh, mental health services, and our offender management system, and I think extrapolate a little broader, just data system improvements. Um, we think that those areas are extremely important, um, and, and we've made some, I think, pretty meaningful investments in those areas, and some of that is captured in the budget already. Uh, what we'd like for this committee to consider, and, and certainly we're glad that Representative Squirrel is here um, at, for the Appropriations Committee to consider, and then for our, our friends in the Senate as well, is that th there are a couple other key areas that we think should be included in that list. And we'd like to talk about that with you today. And, and we can discuss the financials and certainly Matt is the expert on that. And then we have a, a proposal for how we could go about making some investments in those areas. Uh, but first I wanted to talk about, there's, there's three additional areas that the department um, identified as key justice reinvestment investment areas or, or opportunities for us to invest. And those are uh, our community justice centers, which I think everybody on this committee is, is very familiar with. Uh, women's programs and reentry services, and then vocational training programs and preparedness. Um, and so the way that we settled on these three additional investment areas uh, is we looked uh, across the board at uh, where there are kind of key justice reinvestment work being done, uh, and then searched, you know, and consulted with our experts within the department to determine um, could we make meaningful investments in those areas in this fiscal year um, to have a real impact on the justice reinvestment space. And I think in those three categories, we felt that both they, they were kind of core justice reinvestment work being done there, and also they were ripe for, for kind of near-term immediate investments uh, that could have a meaningful difference. And so we wanted to put those out there for your consideration to, to add to the, the four that we already had under um, review. Um, and I'll let Matt walk through some of the financials here about where investments are being made right now and, and why we think in some areas additional investments wouldn't have the same impact as they would in some of these new categories. And so if you'll permit, I'll, I'll hand it over to Matt. Matt, it's all yours. 
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Matt D'Agostino, Interim Deputy Commissioner of Corrections. Um, so I've sent over, we sent over a document earlier, and there's um, kind of two shaded areas. Uh, one is the FY2, FY22 funding, and the other is um, known FY23. This is all base funding uh, for FY23 at this point. But quickly walking through, kind of, um, we have the $360,140, which is in the DOC base, and that's from the out-of-state reduction related to the FY21 budget bill. And additionally, we have $417,030, which is one-time funding, and that was also related to out-of-state, but that's, that was the surplus from FY21 carried forward to this budget year. So that's the $777,000 that um, we kind of started the conversation off with um, and, and where we're looking to invest the dollars over the across the categories that the commissioner just outlined. In addition to that, we have DOC has two separate base budgets and DMH has one. So there's $200,000 in DOC's base for domestic violence intervention. We currently have a grant for that $200,000 with the Vermont network. Um, not much has been spent so far. I think it's about $30,000 so far this year. Um, certainly the hope is as, as, the, as the program grows, there will be more expenses there. Uh, $300,000 also in DOC base related to transitional housing for which um, investments in grants, um, release funding, some training opportunities that are being looked at are, uh, that's where the funds for that are, are currently earmarked for. And then there's also $400,000 of base justice reinvestment funding that sits in the Department of Mental Health's budget. That's being looked at for a uh, pilot of the FACT program, which I think we talked about last week. Um, and there could be potentially some supplemental funding from mental health block grants if the $400,000 turns out to, at least in the earliest stages, not be sufficient funding for that program. So broken out across the categories, we have an FY22, $417,030 of one-time funding. Um, Additionally, there was base funding in the DOC budget of $860,140 and total base funds of about a million and a quarter. It's the 1,260,140, and that's inclusive of the DOC base as well as the DMH base. And all total, um, with one-time and base funding, both departments, DOC and DMH, there's $1,677,170. So the view for, I should stop there, make sure there's not questions, I can go on to 23 if if that's helpful. I love following it. There'll probably be some questions as we proceed. So on the sheet, FY23 effectively mirrors FY22 in every way. Um, so the bottom line number is you know 1,260,140. The only difference is and there's some highlighted sections in yellow that would be any one-time funding from potential surplus from FY22 out-of-state appropriation for savings that then get carried forward to FY23. Um, while our appropriation, while our, our caseload is currently below what the appropriation is, which I, there would be savings, it's early. It's still early to say what that savings will actually be. So it left that blank for the moment, but it's acknowledged there, there will be there will be one-time monies for FY23 as well that are carried forward from any savings from out of state. So just wanted to kind of see the comparison and the intent with this document is, is ultimately kind of in the top section for each budget year to have the view that you're looking at. And below that would be tracking by type of investment and by vendor or whomever the month expenses are being paid to the amounts of money going out for this. So that year over year, we'll have a way of tracking, closely tracking and I know we've had some conversation about how we would do this. So that's that's kind of just wanted to point out that might be a way kind of on a one page view that we may be able, able to do this for 22, 23, and then, and then ongoing after that. So I'm just trying to see where the funding options <clears throat> play into this, particularly with your new proposals, how that would play in. I, I, what we have already is our base of domestic violence intervention. We have the transitional housing, and then we have the mental health piece. We have those three. 
And you've just carried that over into the FY23 budget. But you haven't expanded anything for data collection and then your new proposals for the CJCs, women's programs, and vocational training. So we haven't, on, on this sheet, we have not uh, enumerated any values to those because we wanted to come here and make sure that those were categories of spending that, that you all will be supportive of. I think certainly we've, we've talked about all of these categories at different times and different testimony, but the way we would then look at this is we've, we've got the 777,000 to spend this year and we would look to spend it on the, the data system improvements or the other three categories that we proposed today, and, and possibly on some of the original, the other three original ones that, that I didn't speak of. Um, but we think largely the, the three, if you exclude the data systems improvement, the original three um, are appropriately resourced right now, by and large. Um, I think there are some areas that we could um, fund some additional work in those spaces, but we also think we could have good Kind of bang for our buck, good impact by spending in the, the community justice centers on the women's programs and reentry services or on the vocational training. Questions, thoughts, processing, Kurt, and Newsom? Yeah, uh, did, did you? Was okay. That, okay. I'm, I need to back up a little. Um, on a spreadsheet, it, I always wish I could see the formulas because then I would know what is being added to what is being added. Mm -hmm. But I understand that you can't show the formulas on a piece of paper. So on the left-hand side of this one, um, can you go through slowly again, the difference between, we have 417 in there twice is what I'm asking about. So can you go through that again and explain the numbers going down, especially the ones in the, the lower, seven or so lines. So the top part, I understand. Yeah, um, so lower seven. Ab absolutely. So um, well, right, I'm the, top, the top part is basically the, the money we're talking about, the 777,000. The other is also being talked about, but the 900,000 that's already being invested in very specific areas. Um, the next three lines are just, it's broken out between one time and base for DOC, DMH, and, and total, basically. So those aren't, those, those are just more informational. I'd say if, if you ignore those three lines, the 417, the 860,000, the, the 1,260, and look at the final three numbers, that's basically the total of those top two sections, just broken out between what's a DOC's budget, what's a DMH's budget. <laughs> fast. I got the, I, I followed you. I don't see the, the one, 1,260. That's, I'm sorry. What is so, that? What's what? What is added to get one million two hundred sixty thousand one hundred forty? Yep. So that is that's the total of the DOC base funds. So this is going going down from the very top of the sheet. The three hundred sixty thousand one hundred forty that's identified as base, the two hundred thousand base, and the three hundred thousand base. So the out of state reduction from twenty one, and then the domestic violence intervention and transitional housing base money. So again, the 360, the 360,000, 200,000, and 300,000 is that DOC base funds for this year, which is $860,140. The line below that, the 1260140 is everything that I just, that's in the top line for DOC plus the 400,000 from DMH's budget. So this just shows the total base funding for justice reinvestment across both DOC and DMH. So your 860,140 DOC base funds, which includes the 360,140 and then 500,000 of what was appropriated in the FY22, okay? That brings you to 860,140. And then from that, you add the 400,000 that goes to DMH in FY22 for a total of 
1.26140. That's that's right, yes. And then to that 1,260,140, which is all of the base funding for DOC and DMH, if you include then the DOC one time, the $417,030, that's where you get that, that very bottom line number, the 1,677,170. I think what's throwing you, what's throwing you is the one, one million two hundred seventy-seven. Yeah, one seventy plus the four hundred for DMH. What is that? That's kind of throwing us. Understood. It. You know, I there's there's a lot of different ways that I could have done this or it could be looked at. It's part of it is there's money from DOC's budget and DMH's budget. So. The million two hundred seventy-seven thousand represents the DOC base fund. This is this is the, it's, yeah, it's all it, doesn't, the, it doesn't add up because what you've got is your eight hundred and sixty thousand one hundred and forty, which is your DOC base fund. And you add the 400,000 from DMA. No, you add the one time. Yes. Right. Yes. That 1,200,077 so, is uh, all of the DOC justice reinvestment. So both the one time and the base, but excluding DMH. So I guess simply, if we look at the very top, the 777,170. That yeah, plus the yeah, two next yeah. line, the, the 200,000 base DOC and 300,000 base DOC, it's the 777 plus the 500 gets that 1,277. So I guess the simple way of looking at this is there's six different funding sources or, or buckets, if you will. Five of them belong to DOC in the budget and one of them is DMH. The, the first, uh, I'm sorry, I said, I said six, I said four. there's four, four DOC and one DMH. If you take so the, the, four, the four DOC is 1,277,170. And then you add the one DMH and 400. So you've got a total of 1.67170 that is going to justice reinvestment two in FY22. Correct. In the version two of this document, I'll move that top row just below the 900,000. So it goes in order of, so it, the other, the splitting the one time and base won't be as, it won't look like it's part of the equation that there's multiple more lines in there than it should be. But you're right, the, the 1,677 is inclusive of all funding, DOCs and the 400,000 DMH. Okay, I think. Well, clear as mud. But, but for the purposes of this conversation, only the 777,000 is not already allocated somewhere. Uh, and so for the purposes of our conversation, we're talking about how to divide that, that 777,000. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate having these additional topics um, or areas to look at with this. And I guess one of the questions that I have as we consider these, is, and I also went ahead and saw your options of looking at the flexibility pieces of it, is I know that for some of these programs, they want reliable um, sources of funding, knowing that it's gonna come year to year and that we're building on that base. So um, I guess I would like to hear you speak to that, like you know, wanting to give flexibility, but at the same time, the programs want to know that they're getting a consistent amount of funding from year to year. So they're not ramping up programs only to find out the next year, oh, we actually shifted those funds to something else. So I don't know if you can speak to that. Matt, you wanna take that one? Sure, certainly, yeah, it's a great question. And it's, you know, it's, it's certainly a concern, you know, anytime there's there's one-time funding, that's that's something you know, similar to the CARES Act funding that was received and some of the, some of the same um, areas where it were explored and, and it's it's difficult to build capacity long-term when when there's kind of only the promise of, of funding that's not year over year. Um, 
that certainly is considered in these proposals that that there is there is, there will be a need for um for base funding to to do some of these things uh, that the one-time funding would would programmatically be able to implement some some new items but in the long term you're absolutely right that that one-time funding wouldn't be sufficient to to carry that forward year over year um there are certain pieces that that you know such as the the oms and data system improvements while certain things like if we were to look at new systems as an example typically by and large there's annualized there's annual costs for those items but for something like the offender management system any cost going to that for the most part would be one time so there, there may be an ability with um, with some of the funding to to use just the one time and, and not have the, the concern of we don't have this in in future years potentially. But you're absolutely right in terms of program um, some programs there there is a need for funding that lives beyond when the, when those one time funds are exhausted. I'll just add. For, to for, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll just add to that, you know, when we when we sat down to really consider the full suite of options that we could be investing in, the fact that it was one time money did limit our ability, you know, it immediately kind of eliminated some of the proposals because it wouldn't work without a stable funding source. I think that the three areas we highlighted here, while you're right to say that, you know, they want reliable longer term funding streams. We believe that there is flexibility in these areas that that we could make good, efficient use of one time money and, and look to to build on that investment in the future um, and, you know, test things or or, um, uh, you know, have a, a short term short term spend that would have a real impact. Whereas, you know, some of the longer term investments we just can't make with this type of money. Okay. I, that is helpful to hear. And I guess for us, as we are allocating the 770, um, 7,000, if when we're allocating or making it clear what is uh, base and what is one time. So I think it's clear expectations for, you know, the programs and services that we are giving the money to that they know this is one time versus this is base funding for them. Sarah and then Michelle. So thanks, um, Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the new proposals. Um, what specific, if there is some specificity about what, because um, what this might, what you're thinking is and what this might do for the women's programs and reentry services, because we, is this the work that the service providers do at, at CRCF? Is that what that is geared to, towards? And is there any, like, likewise, like for vocational training, um, it's been a while, so I don't, it's been a while since we've, in this committee, have had a conversation about understanding what currently is happening and what this could do. But I think there's certainly interest in that. Um, so I'd, I'd like to know more of your thinking. Certainly, yeah. So uh, we'll start, I guess, with the women's programs reentry services. So um, there are these proposals um, would would increase funding needs um, to provide continued transition uh, community support services for women who are reentering the communities. Um, there is currently with the and you're you're absolutely right. It's it's the program services that are delivered at, at Chittenden Regional uh, Correctional Facility. The current contracts provide for a number of things, including reentry services. What there's not funding for currently with those is once women are, are reentering the community and they're, they're you know, back in the community, this would bolster the, that support system. So there is um, you know, community support versus just the support they're receiving when, they, when they're in, in incarcerated status. And it, largely the same providers that are, that are being um, that are being used now for services within the facility. And okay, and and do uh, and do you have anything to add about the vocational training and programs Sorry, and preparedness? I wanted to pause just in case there was any any. Um, okay. So yeah, on the vocational side, um, 
there's been many conversations with the DOC's had with with other partners around the state, um, Department of Labor, uh, Voc Rehab folks, um, career technical education centers, um, in terms of how we can help continue vocational training again once folks are leaving facilities, um, because there there is a little bit of a drop off where someone who's supervised in the community by DOC versus somebody who is receiving vocational training in an incarcerated setting are two very different things. DOC handles the incarcerated setting um, programs, but not not on the on the out on the community side. So the hope is to invest with some of these partners and and develop um, programs that would that would enable, as an example, someone who is incarcerated for a number of weeks, months, or longer could take part in certification programs such as serve safe and upon re-entering the community have the ability to perhaps work at a restaurant with that serve safe certification as, as a limited example in the community while that's offered it's not something that's offered through doc um, and and if a person either doesn't know where to go or doesn't have the ability to participate in the program in their area this is something we're looking to do with these funds in terms of partnering partnering with these career tech education centers and others um, to provide that as, as a service to folks. So they're able to get basically vocational training in the community that would that would mirror to a degree what's what's happened, replicate, not replicate, but mirror what's happening within facilities in terms of that, that same certification. Okay. I guess my I guess my the, what I'm grappling with here is when we did the work with the council and state governments, you know, the um, it was a two years of research and working with stakeholders through the working group that really got at like, what are the ways, the investments that we can make to prevent people from being reincarcerated? And I just, I guess I, I while I, I don't I appreciate the work of these other programs, they were not necessarily, there's not a direct linkage. I mean, I, I think what we're trying to do is use it, use these dollars to continue to to address the, the front end, you know, so, uh, you know, the upstream. Um, uh, and I'll, I guess actually I should be, I, I stand corrected. There are also when people are released, you know, to support them in the community. So I appreciate, you know, the thinking about that, that some of these are, you know, really re-entry oriented, like in their investments in the community. I guess I just feel like I need a little bit more deeper understanding about what that would look like. Um, one thing with the Council of State Governments with Justice Reinvestment to particularly for folks who are re-entering from an incarcerative setting is our community partners needed to step up to the plate to start providing programming and services to our folks so it's not all on DOC's shoulders mm -hmm. and budgets and how that gets translated out into this proposal is what you're grappling with. Yeah. Okay, so Marsha and Karen. <coughs> So did you say you already have contracts with CCRC for the women's programs? I'm sorry, but do we have, it cut out for just a second on my end. You said you already have contracts with CCRC for women's programs? We, we do, yes. Uh, CCRC, you, you mean the regional facility? Yeah. Okay, just, make, just making sure. Um, Yes, there there are there are uh, service contracts currently um, for for the facility. Why would it be a new proposal if you already have programs? Or is this is a, just this is? I don't know. Where would these programs go to? Will the community centers? This this is just an expansion of the existing programs uh, to offer services uh, geared toward community support systems versus just the, the services that are being provided within the facilities currently. Okay, and the other thing is, there's always a golden rule: if you uh, start something new, it's going to cost you more. It's going to keep costing you down the road. Well, that's the question of base funding versus one time. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that leads to my question a little bit, where the one time in the green shade, the first line, 360140 is from out-of-state savings in the FY21 budget. So that is being classified as a base, not a one time. 
and it then becomes part of your base funding along with the 200 and 500 that was appropriated. So when you carry this out to FY23, you're still saying that that 360 plus is the base, but you're not accounting for the 417 that now becomes your base, correct? Right. The 417 one is one time, but doesn't that feed into your base similar to the 360? Because the 360 came from savings of out of state bets. What happens if you don't have that savings? Like well, over. that's let's not confuse. What you have said in previous testimony, what happens is those savings that are result from out of state beds then become the base. But you're not doing that for the 417 that was out of state bed savings in FY21. So what's the difference here? So the 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 first, the 360,140 that is base funding and will be in our budget until or unless there's a change proposed or made to it. Um, it so that was that was a reduction of beds within the within the budget bill um, a couple of years back. That rather than going rather than being taken as savings statewide, not just DOC budget, and and put toward other general fund use, that was moved back to from out of state to correctional services. Um, so the those those funds don't rely on. The total expenses for out of state each year. Uh, Converse it to the 417,000 that we have that's that's carried forward from last fiscal year was the difference between the appropriation for FY21 and what was expended by DOC on out of state beds in FY21. So we had approximately 5.6 million in the FY21 budget, of which we spent approximately 5.2 million yielding this, this surplus at the end of the year. That surplus was carried forward, but that's a one-time event. So there wouldn't, we can't say with, with certainty that there would be a, a surplus of that much year over year. So it, it's a one-time savings. There, there would be savings from FY22 as well, but it would be a different amount than that 417,000. The only way to get base from the out of state is to effectively um, reduce the beds, the appropriated level of beds, and then shift those funds to the correctional services budget, which is what was done with the 360,000. And then it's a, basically a permanent budget item versus relying on appropriated level versus expenses each year. So the 417 is vault. We have it this year. So the question is, do you spread out that 417 to a new proposal or do you do a one-time enhancement to what is currently being funded? Here. Yes, I feel like that's where I'm landing with it. And so I might be more open to um, expanding into these other areas, especially if I knew if there were one-time funding sources, because I think what we've heard so far is that there are limited one-time um, infusion opportunities in that the four that we originally looked at. Um, and so we have two decisions to make. We have that 360 that we need to find a dedicated stream for, like, because that's going to be base funding for some project or projects. But this 417, we need to put, I'm guessing we will agree in one-time projects. So I would love to know what are the one-time projects that are available. Within the within the original four categories you're talking about, or even the the new three, like that would be nice. So in terms of That's one, what time. I, there's just limited opportunities for this infusion, and I would like to know. Where could it be used? To get the most bang. So the question is, if you're gonna do the data system improvements, can you do it for 400,000? 
Yeah, you know, this is where we, we, in our own analysis, really got into a rub because I think there are things that we would do to improve the data system, except that there are real constraints on our ability to do that that are beyond just financial. Even if we threw a million dollars at the data system to improve it, we don't have the capacity to be able to do that right now. Uh, that's That's human hours. Um, it's technical expertise, it's working with the, the vendor, the owner of the software, all of that combined would, would curtail our ability to actually spend a million dollars effectively. Uh, I think small dollar amounts, you know, small, um, you know, tens of thousands, there are probably improvements that we could make to that system that are within our capacity to do that in the short term. Um, but I don't think that there's something like a $400,000 investment, I don't think would be prudently invested there. I don't think we could spend it effectively. That's good to know. That's what we need to yeah. target. So and I think you know we can extrapolate some of that analysis to these other areas. It's not, a, not the exact same inputs, but it, it would, I think it would be challenging to effectively spend that level of money on some of these other areas too, which is why we came up with other areas that we think that level of investment could actually make a meaningful difference right now. We don't have granular project level investments to be able to propose to you, but what we can say is we think that there is enough flexibility in these other three categories that we could spend that type of money or a portion of that type of money in these areas and have a meaningful improvement in, in the community system. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just something that came to mind as we're talking about one-time funds with some of these areas we've already talked about is something that was mentioned last week by um, the woman who testified from the Vermont Network. She talked about, um, I can't remember if you guys were on the call or not, but she, she spoke to the need for development of curriculum for people who are in domestic violence situations who are same-sex, you know, same-sex relationship situations or LB, LGBTQIA situations. Um, apparently there's all the curriculum is geared towards opposite sex partners and there is no curriculum for that. And she had said, we said, well, if you had more money, what could you do? And she mentioned we could develop curriculum that would be appropriate to these situations. And that would be developing the curriculum would be a one-time fund. Now, I don't know what that number would be. We didn't actually get that number separately, but I guess I just wanted to sort of circle back to that issue because that does feel like something that could be really useful and also would be a one-time fund. We think. We think. Developing so curriculum have... usually would be a one-time. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we'd have. Yeah. A check. Yeah. That's a good, good point. Bert. So, what I understand that you're saying here with this proposal is, here's the money. Um, here's some additional things that you think uh, kind of fit into justice reinvestment too, and you'd like us to choose one of the three options at the bottom to either let you spend it the way you want or give some minimum budgets or be really prescriptive and tell where it should go. Is that- I think that's a very good uh, summary of, of where we're at, yes. Okay, thank you. And I think, you know, the goal, we, did, we haven't talked too much about the options that we outlined on the bottom. I think the goal there is, and for everybody involved, how do we really make use of this money this year in an efficient way that, that remains kind of the we're the best stewards of the tax dollar so that we get the most justice reinvestment bang for our buck and so i think from our perspective certainly the more flexibility we have with the money the more we can pursue you know a one-time curriculum development program we could we could do that and and if so for example let's say that that program cost $15,000, I have no idea how much that would cost, but let's say it cost $15,000 and you all had appropriated or told us you need to spend $100,000, we may not be able to spend that. And so we're left with kind of $85,000 of unused funds. But if we said, if you said you have $100,000 to spend on any of these categories and we said, well, 15,000 would be a great investment in the curriculum, but in the CJCs, they could get a program off the ground for $50,000, and there's still some residual that we could spend on a third thing. We think that that level of flexibility will give us the, the best opportunity to spend this money efficiently on areas that we already have kind of pre-approved by you, that we all agree on are good justice reinvestment areas. 
that's kind of the, the, the logic underpinning our proposal today. Yeah. Um, I, it's like that makes sense to me. And I guess the one piece I keep getting stuck on is wanting to have it be very clear, like, okay, you can spend the money in these areas, but to make sure like these are one time expenses, like you're not gonna be coming back asking for this money year after year um, because we can't guarantee it's there. So I feel like I would wanna put language in it. Like you have 400,000 to do with this, you you know, and then you have three thought to do with, you know, one time things to break it down and be very clear about that. Because if we come back next session and you've created all these new programs, um, yeah, they'll be great, but that would be like, shoot, that we don't have the funds for them. So that's how it, that's what we would recommend to a probes. We'd indicate that this is one time and then they would mm -hmm. run within the structure of their budget. Oh, Scott and then Sarah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I missed it, but that 360,140 base, um, is that is that, uh, is that earmarked for, for something? That's what we have to sort of decide. Is that what we're talking about now? That's yeah. part of what we're talking about. Yeah. And then what they have indicated is that would go into the base. Right. And the base would then be divided up between what we are already funding. Is that accurate, Matt? Cor uh, yes, correct. The, the base, the base is, is going well. If it's specific to the 360, I think that still remains, it depends on what the ultimate decision is in terms of areas of funding. But yes, overall, the base would be going toward the broader categories that we've talked about. That's how you have it divvied up here. When you look at the line for 860,000, that includes your 360,140. Right. That includes the 500 from what we did. And you're incorporating that 360 with the 500 to be your base that then goes out to those three programs or two programs. Well, that's my question. Three to two programs because you haven't included the DMH. The 360. Yep, for the purpose of this sheet, just just showing where the where the funds are, the three hundred sixty thousand hasn't been in, it's been included with the five with our, with the other five hundred thousand as their as their all base funds, but the two hundred thousand that's domestic violence and the three hundred thousand that's transitional housing, those are dedicated funds to those particular areas. The three hundred sixty thousand is is not. Uh, is not dedicated toward just those two things at this time. That was only for the purpose of showing what, what's in DOC base versus statewide, versus DOC and DMH's base, and then the one-time funding as well. I think you're using that 360 interchangeably between the terms base and one-time. Yeah. That's where it's getting confusing. And it's getting a little late and some folks have to- And if we did, it, if we ended up in as many people want, no more out of state beds, we wouldn't have this money anyway. Well, that, well, that's where you build your base with those savings and then it becomes part of their ongoing budgets. Right. That's, and then they don't have the money that they're expending on out of state beds or spending it on the programs instead. I, I've got to go at 4 30. Yeah. You've got to go at 4 30. It's really we got quick. some yeah. questions, Sarah. My, my, my last suggestion is suppose you fellows come up with a with a suggestion about where how to do how to divvy up this money. That's what we're doing. Well, they can come up with a suggestion. This is their suggestion. Well, I mean, we haven't we haven't decided where the where the four seventeen is going, or even where the three sixty is going. That's correct. And, but this is what they've no. put out. Is right. I know. Their, so I'm asking for them to go with more detail. That's. I, I'll stop. Uh, Sarah. So oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I just I think I help. I don't know. I, I when I think about one time funding, what it can go towards. Like we've done this before. It can go towards a capital, like a piece of equipment. It could go towards supplies for people who are re-entering communities. It can also go towards, we've done it for like bonuses or, you know, that like we've done with DOC and the BAA. I'm curious if you'd be comfortable saying, you know, the community justice centers have an ask into, had an ask into DOC. And I think it's, I know it's in, you know, being considered by appropriations. Is it a one-time ask? I mean, is it, is it, or is that, that uh, it's a million dollars, I think. Um, and was that a one-time ask for like 
for their workers to be retention bonuses and, and things like that, similar to what we've done um, with other uh, agencies and workers? Um, or is it, are they asking for something to be like an increase moving forward? Is that, are you comfortable? I, it, will, it would just help me understand what we could do with community justice centers with one-time funding. That's where I'm coming from. I think you guys got to go back to the drawing board a little bit on your three new proposals. Number one, be a little clearer. If it's one time, you don't want to be building the expectation that the money is going to be there following, correct? So I think you folks need to noodle this. I'd like to have Sarah connect with Sarah Robinson and see about the curriculum expansion yep. and see what the cost is and if it is one time for that. And I think we need to come together as a committee to have a further discussion. Do we want to put any of these dollars, the 777, any of it into a base? Or do we want to put it all into one time? Because if we put it into a base, we got to keep funding it. Yep. Already, 360 is already in the base. So that's the confusion. Well, I can, if it's already in the base. I can. Yeah, but uh, hold on. If it's already in the base, then does that mean it's going to go to domestic violence and transitional housing? Because that's this, your base funding. This is in addition to those already dedicated base funds. So th these are additional base funds that aren't yet dedicated to any specific program or, or direction. So that 360, we can put it towards those two that are already part of your base, or we bring in another project that will continue to be part of your base. I think that's right. Matt, can you confirm? That, that's right. The one caveat, I would, caveat that I would include here is that the transitional housing is one of those two items. And while future funding may be needed, I think with all of the grants that were just redone for FY22 and, and the efforts through the process uh, that was undertaken last year, having more funding there with the limited availability of housing in the community and, and capacity needs not, being, not exceeding what we actually have right now, I'm not sure that we would be, how we, we, we'd be able to use an additional sum of money on top of the 300,000 that was injected into the FY22 budget for housing. So just as an example, in, in at least one of those four categories, it could be very difficult Similarly, with the mental health side, there's already funding that's dedicated and, and it's a program that may over time cost could, could be more than, than what's in, in the base in, D, in a DMH's budget. But right now it's too soon to say that any additional funding would be needed. And certainly these funds wouldn't go toward, toward that at this point because the initial funding that the base hasn't been spent yet on, on that program. So I think that's, that's the challenge with we do have the 360,000 in base, but there's already funds dedicated to those areas, to the other areas that are, that are taking care of a lot of the, the initial needs for starting for implementation purposes. So the question before us now is what entity do we then start creating as a base? If we're not going to put it towards transitional housing, we're not going to put it towards domestic violence intervention or the DMH, because we don't know even how the 400,000 is going to play out. What do we pick up to then become part of our base funding that will be ongoing? That's what's before us for the 360. For the 417, it's a one-time shot. Yeah. No. That's the differentiation. And the question is, what do we do knowing that if you infuse 360 into one of the new proposals, it's going to be ongoing? Mm -hmm. And do we want to do that? So we got a break mm -hmm. because we're listening to the members we do someplace else five minutes ago. Um, we got to think. Sarah's going to check with Sarah Robinson of the network to see about the curriculum. 
to set up a curriculum for um, LGBTQ. LGBTQ. Yeah. I can never remember yeah. the, that's what you mean, right? Yeah, okay. the LGBTQ population, what that curriculum is. Is it a one time shot? But if they start up the curriculum, are they going to need people to um, implement it? Because it may not be a one time shot. So they may need more help to implement it. I don't know. So let's circle back. Um, I know Approps is the one that's going to be handling this based on our recommendations. So let's circle back as a committee and we'll reach out to you, both Nick and Matt. Um, might not be till next week at the rate we're going. <laughs> Friday afternoon. Don't we have something else Friday afternoon? We have yeah. a bond premium at one, but I would imagine that would go about 45 minutes. We're meeting with Commissioner Dunn in person. At noon. He could come in person. To Aren't you at Friday. noon? Uh, we're at one. He couldn't do noon. We'll figure it out as we start playing through this because we got to bring up members that we're missing. So thank you for adjusting your schedule. Happy to do it. Us. Thank you for having us. I cut it short, but folks have got to leave the building for different commitments. I can stay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you folks on YouTube. We're going to sign off. Mary, did you have a question? I was going to say, so does DOC have homework to do to be ready for our yes. next meeting with them? Somewhat. Keep thinking. Well, keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. Let's see in terms of where do you want to spend money to build the base? That's That to me is more the issue, the 360. So we can move done for the day. Thank you.